In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1105 News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. 11 Alive News at noon starts now. And good afternoon, all new at noon. Some good news on the U.S. job market. First time unemployment claims falling below 1 million. The first time since mid-March. The number of continuing claims, people receiving unemployment for two weeks or longer, also falling. It's now 15 and a half million. An improvement, yes, but still a long way 
from before the pandemic. In Georgia, the number of first time unemployment claims falling by more than 11,000 last week. The state labor department says 92% of all valid claims have received benefits over the past four months. But that means 8% of people in our state are still waiting for benefits. And we've been hearing from many of you about issues with filing claims or receiving payments, and we're working to get you answers. If you have a question about unemployment, text us at 404-885-7600. The state's largest school district facing some technical issues on the first day of online classes. Tens of thousands of users, this includes students, teachers and staff in Gwinnett County, could not log into the district's website, delaying classes for hours. Nick Sturdivant on how day two is shaping up so far. We wanted to make sure we had everybody online first thing. Um, and you know our pledge is to do better tomorrow. This was the message from Gwinnett County Public Schools after a frustrating day one of virtual learning. A district spokesperson says everyone trying to log in at once created a bottleneck. Many receiving this error message saying apps like Zoom wouldn't launch. This morning we did reach out to the school district. So far we haven't heard of any major issues. Parents like Leona Davis expressing their frustration yesterday. They just didn't prepare. I, I just don't understand why they couldn't prepare and they had all summer. Other parents expressed their understanding and said they were eventually able to get in. The district says testing the system over the summer could not duplicate the rush of so many people trying to log in at once. For now, they're working to expand the capacity of its login servers. And Gwinnett says the few issues that did pop up this morning were quickly resolved and they've had about 159,000 users online this morning. A week and a half into the new school year and two Cherokee County high schools have already shut down because of COVID-19. Woodstock High announcing it would be temporarily closing yesterday. It comes just one day after the district closed Etowah High. Both are expected to reopen on August 31st. 14 people tested positive at Woodstock High. Nearly 300 students and staff are under quarantine. Virtual learning starts tomorrow for Woodstock. And who can forget this viral photo of students packed into a hallway at North Paulding High School. The school reporting 35 confirmed COVID cases since the first day of school on August 3rd. The district says digital learning will continue the rest of this week. They are shut down as well. And then on Monday, a hybrid schedule begins. It combines in-person and digital learning. Students opting for face-to-face -face instruction will be separated into two groups and come into school on a rotating schedule based on last name. To read the full breakdown, download the 11 Alive app and click on the scene on TV section. In person instruction is looking a lot different this year. Schools are rearranging classrooms and figuring out new ways to keep learning safe during a pandemic. Christy Diaz with a virtual tour of schools in three districts showing you what it looks like going back to school. When 80% of students opted for in-person learning, North Forsyth High School principal Bob Carneroli had to get creative. We try to go through every single scenario. Like putting lunch tables in a hallway. So normally you would have five or six kids sitting at one of these round tables and now we're only going to have three. He knew keeping 2,200 kids safe and healthy each day was going to be a challenge. So he asked students and teachers to weigh in. Sounds like it was a real collaborative effort. It was a collaborative effort. They put up a QR code to act as a hall pass and keep track of students who need to leave the classroom. You know, it's just one less thing students have to touch. Attached mobile hand sanitizers to the sides of all snack machines and hung plastic curtains between the teacher and students in the foreign language classes where looking at someone's mouth is important. Please respect these markings when getting your lunch. The student council even made this video to get everyone on board. I want kids to feel excited about coming back to school, which I think they're going to be. But we do have some new routines in place that are going to hopefully keep Raider Nation safe as long as possible. Over at St. John Newman Catholic School. Good morning, Rita. How are you feeling? They've already been practicing their new protocols. Hi, mommy. Inside, they installed plasma air filters throughout the building to kill germs in the air. I think it has a 99.4% kill rate in 30 minutes. Added bottle fillers to use instead of water fountains and limited classrooms to small numbers of students. We did hire additional staff so that we have 15 children in every classroom. Good morning. Good morning. 
Down in Fayette County, they ran through a mock first day to make sure everything was perfect before the students got there, showing the exact routine students will have to go through to get inside the building. Safety measures they know may feel strange and unfamiliar at first, but will help students stay in the classroom as long as possible. Everyone's working hard. Kawita and Forsyth starting their fall semesters today. Kawita is digital only, Forsyth a mix of both digital and in-person learning. So President Trump, meanwhile, meeting with educators and parents at the White House, tackling the issue of reopening schools. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos helping to moderate the event. We know that uh, for students and their families, they can't be held captive to other people's fears or agendas. We have got to ensure that families and parents have options that are going to work for their child and for their children's education. For weeks now, the president has been pushing for schools to fully reopen this fall. And as some students head back to the classroom, we're taking a look at some of the zip codes where COVID-19 is the most prevalent. In Fulton County, 30349 is the zip code with the highest number of infections. There are 13 public schools located in that area. At the end of the last school year, they had nearly 160 cases. As of Monday, that number had soared to above 1,300. School resumes virtually for them on August 17th. Now to Gwinnett County, and here's a look at zip code 30044 in the Lawrenceville area. It saw a near 900% increase in COVID cases over the summer. All 13 public schools in that zip code will stay with digital learning for now, but in two weeks, the district is expected to begin to phase in students for in-person learning. DeKalb County students returning on Monday, and they'll also be online. The Lithonia area, zip code 30058, is dealing with the most cases in DeKalb. Infections there are now six times greater compared to the spring. Chesley, over to you. All right, thanks a lot. We are looking at, uh, well, perhaps you didn't change your tea time and you're heading out this afternoon. You may experience a downpour, so make sure you have your golf umbrella with you. And if you hear thunder, make sure you get over to the clubhouse. Get on in there. Temperatures will be warming up already. We're in the middle 80s right now. 91 degrees will be our afternoon high temperature with a few of those scattered thunderstorms around. Not much going on on the radar right now. You can see a nice dry scan. We've got plenty of sunshine out there, so it's also helping to heat us right on up. You factor in the humidity with this, and of course it feels like uh, the upper 90s out there. 86 in Atlanta, 86 in Duluth, 86 also in Dalton, 84 in Edenton, 80 in Clayton at the current tower. Here is your forecast for today. We'll see those temperatures drop back down to about, uh, well, I'm thinking about 85 degrees by 7 o'clock tonight. Of course, we'll be watching for those scattered thunderstorms to end by about 9 or 10 o'clock. And guess what? We got a new tropical storm in the Atlantic. We'll give you the latest track from the Hurricane Center coming up. Sheba. Thanks, Chesley. Yearbook backlash. Parents upset over a yearbook photo, which they say shows young students making a racist gesture. We'll tell you how the district is responding. Health. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. 
Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit C. Welcome back. Parents at one metro area school are upset over a photo in their children's yearbook. They say it showed students making a racist gesture. Janu Her has reaction from parents and the district's response. Some parents in the state's largest school district reached out to Dyer Elementary with concerns this week. It's all because of what they saw in their kids' yearbook. As a parent, you don't want your kids to be exposed to these type of gestures or these type of uh, racial underlinings. We've blurred the faces of the students and their gestures in this yearbook photo. The yearbooks are from last school year, but due to the pandemic, the yearbooks were sent home this week. Some of the kids were photographed pulling their eyes back, making them smaller. A gesture Thomas Zhang says is racist against Asian people. Bi Zhang's sons also go to Dyer Elementary. They may may not know what it means, but we as an adult know what that means. We grew up in that environment where we were made fun of. Stephanie Cho is the executive director of civil rights group Asian Americans Advancing Justice Atlanta. She thinks the gesture is less common nowadays, but still has the same meaning. It's sort of a resurgence of um, old school racism. Gwinnett County Public Schools released a statement. It reads in part, we see this as a teachable moment for our students, helping them to understand that their actions can hurt others, even if they don't intend to offend. We're first uh, generation Asian Americans and we were going through this process. I don't want my kids to go through the same process. Well, after we reached out to the district, Thomas says Gwinnett County Schools called him to offer a written apology. The district says it plans to review the school's yearbook processes to make sure this doesn't happen again. We have new developments in the case now involving the fired Atlanta police officer accused of murdering Rayshard Brooks. Bond will not be revoked for Garrett Rolfe. Fulton County District Attorney Paul Howard arguing for Rolfe's bond to be revoked after learning he had traveled to Florida while out on bond. The judge clarifying in court yesterday that Rolfe is not allowed to travel out of state, but things will stay the same regarding his bond. A massive drug bust in Metro Atlanta putting an alleged drug trafficker behind bars. Antonio Daniels, known as Freckleface Sean, was arrested after investigators confiscated 170 kilos of heroin along with cocaine, marijuana, around 40 guns and about a million dollars in cash from two of his homes. They would not disclose where those homes are located. Daniels is accused of having ties to a drug operation based in Mexico. The DEA investigator in charge of the case says he hasn't seen this much heroin seized in an Atlanta bust in his 30 years in law enforcement. The body of a teenager has been found following a three day search of the Alcove River in Newton County. This is new at noon here. According to the Newton County Sheriff's Department, 38 year old Antonio Perry and 14 year old Dijiern Greer reportedly went underwater and never surfaced on Tuesday. Perry's body was recovered yesterday. The 14 year old body was found just a short time ago. Perry's daughter tells us her dad was trying to rescue Greer from drowning. I think they was out there fishing. A little boy jumped in the pool for the first time, and then my daddy got, got out there and got him. For, and then he jumped in there a second time, and they didn't make it the second time. Some just kept pulling them down. Perry's daughter also telling us that the 14-year-old Dejereen Greer was the son of her dad's girlfriend. Have you seen this woman? Take a good look here. Detectives in Paulding County. This is actually the Paulding County Sheriff's Department. They say that Matilda Gonzalez has been missing for nearly a year now. The 43 year old was last seen in October in Cobb County. Investigators say there are some suspicious details about her disappearance, but they did not elaborate.
Well, good afternoon once again, everyone. We are dealing with a mix of sun and clouds so far this afternoon, and uh, no rain coming out of the clouds yet. You're looking at a live look here at Rome, our Rome Tower camera, and things seem to be A-OK. -okay. You don't see much of the sun bouncing off the buildings here, but... Uh, yeah, we do have enough of it to help heat us up. Yeah, temperatures are in the middle 90s, or middle 80s, rather, not the 90s, as we speak. But it does feel like the middle 90s out there uh, as we go along. Take a look. Here is our radar satellite composite. It does show uh, a few clouds here and there. There we are over toward Rome. You can see a few clouds there. Uh, some places we have mostly sunny skies. So uh, the sun is shining. It feels hot. It is hot, but after about 2 o'clock, we'll start to see more of those cumulus clouds form, and we'll get a chance for a couple scattered thunderstorms to maybe provide us a little heat, uh, relief from the heat. Temperatures at 86 degrees in LaGrange. You're at 86 in Marietta, 86 also over toward Duluth at the current tower. So a hot afternoon for us. The wasometer is how we rate your weather on a scale from 1 to 11, with 11 being the most perfect day we can have for this time of year. Only a 5, 50% chance for those scattered showers and thunderstorms with 91 degrees for a high temperature. That's above our average for this time of year, so obviously a lower number. The radar satellite composite regional wide shows some thunderstorms over into Mississippi. Now, we've been tracking this upper level disturbance that's going to continue to drift over toward the east. That's what's increasing our chance for the rain, especially during the afternoons. We'll have the pop up thunderstorms this afternoon, but I think it'll be uh, a little bit more widespread as we head into Friday. We got a new tropical storm out there. This is Josephine. Yeah, little Josephine had a hard time forming, but finally got enough uh, wind speed, or at least the center of circulation, uh, got to be strong enough that it became a tropical storm. Winds now up to 45 miles per hour. The movement is to the west, northwest at 15 miles per hour, still just under 1,000 miles away from the Leeward Islands here, and that's the direction that it's headed in. Latest track from the Hurricane Center shows that it will be north of the Leeward Islands, headed toward the Bahama Islands, but stays north there. But notice how it weakens as it gets there and then begins to hook back. So that's good news. It doesn't pose a threat right now, at least to the United States or to any landmass at all. If it stays on this particular track, we'll keep an eye on it for you. Keep you updated. As you know, these storms have typically a mind of their own. All right, here we go. Our forecast track model shows again that mix of sun and clouds out there. Some isolated showers breaking out after two o'clock. You could be one of the I'm going to say the fortunate ones to get a break from the heat by one of these showers, but there could be a couple thunderstorms embedded. Tomorrow, I think it becomes a little bit more widespread once we get to the afternoon, as far as those thunderstorms go. We're going to give it a 70% chance for the rain, and it stays with us through the overnight going into Saturday as well. Saturday, we're looking at a 50% chance for the rain. Tomorrow and Saturday, the temperatures will be held down a bit because of the extra cloud cover and the potential for the rain. 20% uh, chance on Sunday, so that'll be the better of the two weekend days. We stay with that low chance for rain on Monday, but as we head toward the middle of the work week, that chance will start to go back up again. Sheba, back to you. All right. I haven't seen an 11 in a while, Chesley. Thank you. Frantic moments caught on police body cam as an officer rushes to save a man in a wheelchair from an oncoming train. I'll be out with the mail sack on the tracks. Try to get him out. Go on. Can you get up? An incredibly close call there. The Lodi California Police Department releasing this video, hard stopping to say the least. The man's wheelchair somehow got stuck on the railroad tracks. Fortunately, Officer Erica Urea was in the area, saw the crossing arms come down, and stepped in in the nick of time. She managed to drag the man to safety. He was taken to the hospital for minor injuries, but he's going to be okay, thanks to her. All right, multiple posts on Facebook claiming Senator Kamala Harris cannot serve as president in, in the event Joe Biden could not complete his term. Our Verify team is checking out the claims. Please clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, 
live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Soon, Georgia voters will be able to request an absentee ballot online with a few simple clicks. The state election board greenlighting a new application web portal. The goal is to make it faster and easier. Several of you reached out to 11 Alive about the complicated process to even find the ballot application online. While the Secretary of State's office did make some changes to its website, the new portal should make requesting absentee ballots easier for voters. It should also make processing ballots faster. The Verify team is looking into viral claims that Senator Kamala Harris is ineligible to become president because her parents are foreign born. But is it true? Here's Evan Kosloff. Politics can be messy and misinformation is commonplace. And that's why the Verify team is here to stick with the facts. Just moments after Joe Biden announced Kamala Harris as his running mate, the online rumors began. Just look at this post on Facebook calling her ineligible. Quote, all presidents must be the product of citizen parents, but Kamala Harris is not. So let's verify, do your parents need to be citizens of the United States in order for you to qualify to be president? Our sources are Article 2, Section 1 of the Constitution. This 2011 report from the Congressional Research Service. My name is Lawrence Solom. And this law professor from the University of Virginia School of Law. Let's start with the Constitution, which has the following requirements to be a president or a vice president. You must be at least 35 years old. You must have lived in the United States for at least 14 years. And then this. You must be a natural born citizen. Solem says that there is still some debate about if natural born applies to children born to U.S. citizens overseas, but he says it gets a lot more simple for those born here in the United States. What everyone agrees is if you're born on American soil, you are a natural born citizen. And so you'd be eligible to run for president. You're or eligible vice president. to run for president or vice president. And since Kamala Harris was born in California, that makes her eligible, regardless of the fact that her parents were foreign born. So we can verify that this rumor is false. Kamala Harris is eligible to become president. There you go. Another Georgia college has been affected by football conferences postponing their college football seasons. Kennesaw State will not play any conference games this fall, but are they still going to play some of their games? Alex Glaze has the latest from the team's head coach. There's no trade off for in person communication. Kennesaw State head football coach Brian Bohannon hates Zoom. So the past few months, it's been pretty tough. The tough part about this whole deal is it's just unknowns, you know, and at least this gives us a little direction and something we can work toward. Kennesaw State's football season has been postponed. The Big Sky announced today that all fall sports are postponed with hopes of playing in the spring. I want our kids to feel safe and healthy and have the opportunity to do things they want. To do. I think ultimately that's where the Big South is coming from. But living in the unknown is, is really challenging and I appreciate the fact that they made a decision that at least gives us some, some, some direction. It didn't give us all the answers, but it gives us some direction. But all hope for football in the fall is not gone just yet for the Owls. The Big Sky announced that schools can play up to four non-conference games. It's up to the individual schools whether or not they play. For us, it's really simple. We're going to, if, if there's opportunities come up, it's going to be up to our team, our kids, on what we want to do. It ain't going to be about money. We're going to make this about our kids. Bohannon says regardless of whether or not Kennesaw State plays in the fall, he intends to have his players working out. Doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. 
Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to the coronavirus outbreak has hit our economy hard. Nearly 16,000 restaurants across the country have shut down because of COVID-19. And a new study shows black owned businesses are closing their doors twice as fast. One Atlanta staple almost became one of them. Hope Ford shares how two young women stepped in to help out the owner. You know, when they talk about the pandemic, they talk about those that had pre-existing conditions are the ones that are hit hardest by the actual virus. As a black owned business with very limited access to capital, you have a pre existing condition. Our chances of survival were a lot slimmer. Will Turner's owned the food truck Blacksican for 10 years. In 2016, he opened a freestanding restaurant. And four years later, the restaurant became a casualty of the pandemic. We had to close our doors for four months. Little did he know, Alexis Acarolo and Z Clark were coming up with a plan. There's a bigger problem helping the black community. The two started a GoFundMe to help businesses damaged from riots after the police killing of George Floyd. We had reached about $100,000 in like two days. Taking that money, the pair started the nonprofit Rebuild the Block, helping black owned businesses stay open during COVID. Turner received one of the nonprofit's grants, about $2,500. A small grant from two women Turner has never met is what will keep his food truck rolling until the end of the year. So y'all keep doing it the way that you're doing it. Don't listen to the critics. Don't listen to any of the naysayers. Every little bit helps. I almost was brought to tears just now because I was just like, wow. Like, I, I, I didn't realize that we really are helping. It feels so, it's a satisfaction that I have, I can't even explain. Sister girl, if y'all have gave me $500, that would have been $500 less that I had to worry about, and that is a blessing. I remember when we first told his story and how he was struggling so far for the month of August rebuild the block received 57 applications for grants. They say that shows how great the need really is, especially in the black community. I want to thank you so much for watching 11 Alive News at noon. I'm Sheba Russell. Have a great day. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only.
We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1101 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe? 